the nabob I want to buy your land We can trade or I'll give you a fair price Oh, but nabob said to Ahab This land is not for sale It's an inheritance from our fathers No price can prevail Well, Ahab's heart was saddened But Jezebel, his wife, said Arise, O king, and make your heart glad she had Naboth stoned, but he was dead. The land was left, but he now possessed heaven in his stead. Not for sale, not for sale. This salvation that I have is not for sale. It's an inheritance from our fathers made on Calvary. It's not for sale at any price, and it will never be. Not for sale. salvation that I have is not for sale. It's an inheritance from our fathers right on Calvary. It's not for sale at any price. It will never be. Oh, Satan comes a seeking to buy out your soul that he might possess it as his own. Well, he'll paint a pretty picture of riches, he will tell. But, friend, your star is worth more than gold, so just refuse to sell. Well, I'm glad of the day he saved me, purchased my soul for me, that I might live eternally. Oh, when I grow so weary, yet Satan comes so bold, I'll overcome the battle, for I just will not be sold. Not for sale, not for sale. This salvation that I have is not for sale. It's an inheritance from our fathers paid on Calvary. It's not for sale at any price. It will never be. Well, when Satan comes a seeking to buy out your soul, that he might possess it as his own. Well, he'll paint a pretty picture of riches, he will tell. But friend, your soul's worth more than gold, so just refuse to sell. Well, I'm glad of the day he saved me, purchased my soul for me, that I might live eternally. Well, and when I grow so weary, yet Satan grows so bold, I'll overcome the battle, for I just will not be sold. Not for sale, not for sale. This salvation that I have is not for sale. It's an inheritance from our fathers paid on Calvary. It's not for sale at any price, and it will never be. Not for sale, not for sale. This salvation that I have is not for sale. It's an inheritance from our fathers paid on Calvary. It's not for sale at any price and it will never be. Well, it's not for sale at any price and it will never be. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the church of the air. We're here in the gospel barn tonight, praising the Lord. That's what we're here for, to lift up the name of Jesus. So we're not here to entertain you. We're just here to tell you about the Lord and how much he loves you and how much he cares. So I want to read this. I'm going to do a lot of reading of the scripture tonight. I don't know that I'll do a lot of talking, but I probably will. They don't need to say I'm not. But I want to talk to us about something. We don't hear a lot about this anymore. The Holy Ghost. When I was growing up, when somebody got saved and they came to the altar and got saved, then they preached sanctification. You got to clean yourself up. Now they don't say nothing about sanctification. You just get to come in and get saved, wear what you want to, go where you want to, say what you want to, but that don't work. It just won't work. I had a young preacher well here a while back in the church. He preached and he said, what worked 25 years ago won't work now. I beg your pardon. That's all that will work now. 
what worked. Tw- That's why the churches has no power. We don't live like we used to 25 years ago. We don't dress like we used to 25 years ago. But Jesus, this is over in Acts 1 and the fourth verse. And being a sim- this is after Jesus had been crucified and he was raised from the dead. And he being assembled together with the disciples, with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he, you have heard of me. He didn't say if you want to stay in Jerusalem. He didn't say you can or you can go home. He commanded them to stay there till they were filled with the power from on high, which was the Holy Ghost. You know why Jesus was telling them this? He knew what they were going to face. He knew they were going to have to have the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you remember old Peter, when, when the, uh, he went to... Jesus went to trial, and Peter denied him and three times and said he didn't even know who he was. But I want you to read through the book of Acts. After Peter, I'm spitting all over the world, after Peter got the Holy Ghost, you didn't read where he backed down anymore. You didn't read where Peter let that scare them anymore. And Jesus told them, go to Jerusalem. Stay there. I'm going to send you some power. And he's telling us now, stay there till you get the power that's endued from on high. Don't pray a little lay me down to sleep prayer. You pray till you get that good Holy Ghost. We need him. Jesus said it's a gift. Uh, He said, I'm going to send you a gift uh, over in Luke 24 and 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued from power from on high. This power don't come from the White House. This power don't come from the mayor's office or the governor's office. So it don't come from the church of God or the Baptist church or any other church. It comes from on high. If we get the good Holy Ghost, it's going to come down from on high. And we can pray. And on the day of Pentecost, uh, I believe when they went to that upper room uh, and they stayed there 10 days and they tarried and they talked to the Lord, when they come out, out of there. They were the moral taller than the moral They were acting kind of like I did when I got the good Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, I didn't get that quiet kind. I got that shouting kind. I believe when they came out of that upper room, they were praising the Lord. They were lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, they were praising God. And they were staggering around on that new wine like drunk people. Have you ever been drunk on the Spirit? There is no high like the Holy Ghost high. And let me tell you, you can get this on Sunday night. On Monday morning, you won't have a hangover. You won't be spent your light bill or your grocery bill but you'll still have that joy. You won't have that old dread, and you won't be sick like you are when you have a hangover, but you'll still have that joy and that peace that comes with it. No wonder Jesus said, I command you. Hey, today, people act like they don't need the Holy Ghost. Preachers don't preach it anymore. We don't talk about it anymore, but we need that power. We need it to make it through the world. We need it to make it through all these problems and these troubles that we have. And the people begin to say, say, what's the matter with these people? What's going on with these people? And I can hear them talk in my language, and I know they can't talk our language. And somebody said, why are they just drunk? They just drunk. Uh, they just drank too much wine. But then old Peter, the same one that had denied Jesus a few days before, he jumped up and he said, These men are not drunk. They're not drunk. How long have you heard 
Somebody accused the church of shouting too much or praising the Lord too much. How long has it been that you, since you've been in a service where people just praised the Lord and got drunk on that new wine and staggered around? I'm here to tell you out there in TV land, it's real. It's real. And you may say, well, that was for the disciples. Uh, but let me tell you what old Peter said. When he stood up, now this is not something that I said. This is what Peter said. If I can find it right here. But I've got it wrote down anyway. I'll tell you what it was, but I wanted to read it to you. Peter stood up and he said, this is for you, for your children, them that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Aren't you glad you're one of the called? I'm glad I'm one of the called. I'm glad it's for me. I'm glad Jesus went, looked down through the ages and he said, that little granny over at Trafford can have the Holy Ghost too. She needs that power. You need that power. We all need the power that comes. It's not just a matter of dancing around or speaking in tongues, uh, but the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you. He'll tell you, don't go there. Don't do that. Uh, and when you do, when you get out of order, he'll tell you you shouldn't have done that. He'll break your heart. I told somebody the other day, I can't get away with nothing. I can do just a least little old thing or say just a little old thing, and Brother Kenneth, I got to go and make it right. But I'd rather the Holy Ghost tell me now and I don't have to face it when I get up there. We won't have a chance to straighten it out up there. So I said, just go ahead, Holy Ghost, and tell it to me now. Let me get it straightened out now. But Peter, oh, here it is. Let me just read this to you. This over in Acts 2 and 39. Peter's still talking to the people. For the promise is unto you, to your children. To your children. He's talking to the people there. All of these different nationalities that are there, he's talking to them. Uh, and he's telling them, you not only can have it, but your children can have it. Our children can have it. Whosoever will can have it. Whoever will clean their step up and they'll draw close to the Lord, they can have this good Holy Ghost. And Peter said, it's to them that will fall off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And he called us. If you're saved tonight, you are called. Clean yourself up uh, and seek the Holy Ghost uh, and get that power. And you can be a witness. Uh, and you may not be a preacher. You may not be a singer. But everybody can witness to the Lord. What kind of witness are you today? What kind of witness am I today? Does, you know, they went on, Peter went on and he was, the man got healed at the beautiful gate and they brought him before the, the, the kings and the rulers and, and he began to talk to them. Uh, and Peter, it said Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost, he began to talk to them. Yeah. And they said, we can tell that he's, they are ignorant and unlearned but we can tell they've been with Jesus. I don't care if people call me fat. I don't care if they call me ugly. I don't care if they call me old. If they can just say, I can tell. If they can just tell I've been with Jesus. Let me tell you something else too, people. They can tell if we hadn't been with Jesus. They can tell if we're not prayed up. They can tell if we don't know what we're talking about. But I'm here to tell you, we need the power. We need the power. And you know, I had one girl ask me one time, do I have to speak in tongues to have the Holy Ghost? I'm not going to answer it. I'm just going to let the Scripture answer it for you. Over in Acts 2 and 4, the 120 spake in tongues on the day of Pentecost. Hey, don't you wish we could get 120 people filled with the Holy Ghost in one mind and one accord? 
Hey, we would turn the Alabama upside down for the Lord. Uh, hey, we could just get this mini right here filled with the Holy Ghost and go down on the streets of Trafford. They ain't no telling what to happen down there. But we can't keep our mind on it, can't we? We can't keep our mind on it. We got to go wash dishes. We got to go wash the car. We got to cut grass. Uh, but we need to get close to the Lord. Let me read you a little bit more. Acts 10, 44, the Gentiles, you know who a Gentile is? Everybody that's not a Jew was a Gentile. The Gentiles in the house of Cornelius spoke with tongues when the Holy Ghost came on them. Acts 19 and 6, the people at Ephesus spoke in tongues when the Holy Ghost came on them. Acts 14 and 8, Paul told the Christians at Corinthians, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. That is the evidence that God lives in us. <laughs> hey, the devil can tell you you're not saved. Uh, he can tell you it ain't real. Uh, but when that good Holy Ghost comes in, he can't fight that Holy Ghost. Uh, he can't fight that power that comes from on high. So let's just pray. And let me tell you this too. When you pray through to the Holy Ghost and you begin to speak in tongues, the more you let him speak, the stronger he will be. Amen. And I remember when I got the Holy Ghost, I, I wanted it more than anything. I wanted the Holy Ghost in my life more than anything. I remember the old Trafford Church of God and I prayed and prayed. <coughs> and I... When I got the Holy Ghost, I just spoke in tongues just a little bit. And I was so excited, I, I just wanted to shout. I wanted to tell the world about it. I run around telling everybody. And then my mother said, Bobby, are you sure you got the Holy Ghost? You didn't speak in tongues, but just a little bit. We don't have to speak in tongues a whole lot to get the Holy Ghost. all right the devil's a liar anyway he don't like the holy ghost he don't want us to talk about it. he don't want you to have that power of the holy ghost but then mother put that doubt in my mind and for a year six months or so i didn't speak in tongues and i kept praying and i thought my back's laid or something i don't have the holy ghost but i kept on praying and i kept promising the lord and asking him for it and the Holy Ghost came in. If you're around me much anymore, you'll see that when I pray, when I sing, when I do most anything, I'm going to talk in tongues. I don't care if anybody likes it or not. I don't care if they say I'm drunk. I don't care if they say I'm crazy. Hey, and they may not understand what we're saying, but we're not talking to them. We're not talking to the world. <laughs> Okay, yes, please. But when Paul, passing through the upper coast at Ephesus, he came to these disciples, there were 12 of them, he came to them and he said, have you seen the, received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, I don't even know what you're talking about. We hadn't even heard whether there'd be any Holy Ghost there. But you know, there's a lot of people today that don't even know whether there's a Holy Ghost or not. There's churches, thank you, that don't believe in it, that don't preach it, and talk about people that do speak in tongues that have the Holy Ghost, but we need to teach it. Let me tell you, and I have some relatives that goes to another denomination, and I tell them, if they ever say one word against the Holy Ghost, you get out of there. Amen. Don't you stay there. You know, uh, Jesus told them over Matthew 12 and 31, we best be careful what we say about the Holy Ghost. I remember one time when I, we, had, we were starting a TV program in Gardendale, and we had a, a boy come on there that came out of the Satan church, and he was testifying about it. Well, when I played that tape, uh, one of the members from the Satanic church called me and said they were going to sue me because he had 
testified against their church. I said, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and sue. See who my lawyer is. See who's going to take care of me. But he said, oh, oh, no, we don't want people to know we're here. I want people to know I'm here. I want people to know that the Holy Ghost is real, that God is real. His word is still real. You best be careful what you say. And I told that man, and he just kept on and on. And he said, I think people that talk, speak in tongues are devil-possessed. I said, you better be careful. The Bible said, anybody that's, let me just read it to you. Jesus said, Matthew 12 and 31, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him in this world, neither in the world to come. I would be careful what I say about the Holy Ghost. If you don't understand it, just say I don't understand it. You don't have to talk about him or, or blaspheme him. Or just say, I don't understand. But I'm here to tell you, I'll take all that God's got. I'll take all that he's got, all the power he's got. I want the good Holy Ghost that I can lay hands on people and them get well. I want to know how to pray for people and them get saved. Uh, we can't do this without the Holy Ghost. The Bible says there's many gifts uh, but they all work by the same Spirit. All of them work by the good Holy Ghost. And we need him more than we need anything in the world. But when Paul went there and he asked these people, if you don't know about the Holy Ghost, what would you baptize unto? They said, to John's baptism. And Jesus had done told them before, John baptized you with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Not many days hence. And he began to tell them. Paul began to talk to them about the good Holy Ghost and how they need. These men were sincere. They were Christian people, but they needed the Holy Ghost. We all need the Holy Ghost. We need him. And Paul began to pray with them and talk to them, laid his hands on them, and they began to speak in tongues. Why would anybody want a car without a motor why would you want the holy ghost without the tongues and the power and the boldness that goes with it hey i can tell you when i first got saved <laughs> i was so bashful i couldn't say hello to nobody hardly without my face turning red and i said lord i can't witness for you i can't work for you if i'm going to do this and but one of my daughters said, Mother, I can't believe you was ever like that. They don't, nobody back me down talking about the Lord. They may put me in jail. They may cut my head off, but I'm going to talk about the Lord. <laughs> Jesus said when he got ready to, you know, there's people that think Jesus is still dead, that he's still in the grave, he's still in the tomb. But you know how we know that Jesus is alive and well? He said, when I go to heaven, when I get up there, I'm going to send you a comforter back. We know he made it because the good Holy Ghost is here with us. <coughs> you may think, You may think and I may think that we're not worthy of the Holy Ghost. We're not, except through the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, saves us. Uh, but just look at this list of who was in the upper room that got the Holy Ghost. Peter the liar was there. He told a lie. I said he didn't know Jesus. Thomas the doubter was there. James and John argued about who was going to be the highest in the position of who could sit next the closest to jesus jesus called them the sons of thunder jesus mother and his brother was there 
And when he was preaching one time, they wanted to get him and take him back home, take him back to Nazareth. And there was probably feelings among the group of people there about John. You know, Jesus kind of showed a little favoritism to John, if I could say it like that. But the one, the Bible says the one that Jesus loved, John. So that was probably a little feeling there among them. Mary Magdalene, she didn't have such a good reputation, but she got the Holy Ghost with them. And this is one we all love. Matthew, the IRS man. Don't you just love it when you get a letter through the mail and say, we, we're checking you out. We're going to check your taxes. and your That's what Matthew did. So you can see by this list that these were human people. They were just like we was. They worked for a living. They did things that we do, and, and my time's run out. Uh, but let me tell you, just keep praying. Yeah. Just keep praying and holding on to the Lord. <coughs> yeah. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need him. Yeah. <coughs> and Jesus says it's a gift. Yes, it is. Peter says it's for them that will obey him. If you obey the Lord and you pray and do the very best you can, God's going to give you the Holy Ghost. He wants you to have that power, and we need it. We have to have it. We not only need it. And there are all time, just about every day, I guess, of my life, I say, Holy Ghost, I need you to lead and guide me today. Jesus said he'd lead us and guide us into all truth. How many false prophets? Uh, how many things are going on that's not true out there? Ask the Lord, let me know. Let me know what's the truth and what you want me to do about this. The Holy Ghost will tell you if you'll listen to him. Just listen to him and live for the Lord. And be ready to go to heaven when he comes. And talk to people about the Lord. If you want some boldness, uh, Jesus said you can, when you get the Holy Ghost, you'll re witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We are the uttermost part. But you know what? If these people hadn't went out and told the gospel, if we don't tell it, Jesus died in vain. There'll be people that don't know it. We wouldn't have known it if somebody hadn't have told us. If it wasn't written in the book, we wouldn't know it. Read the book if you don't know what to do. Talk to the Lord and he'll help you. I guess my time's out. But I, I want to tell you that we love you and Jesus loves you. If you've got a testimony, if you want to sing, you want to preach on the church of that, it won't cost you nothing. We'll put you on here with us for nothing. But don't come here to lift up your group. Don't come here to praise your pastor or lift up your church. Uh, we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, and if you need prayer, you call us. Uh, we'll pray with you. Night or day, I'll pray with you. We'll put your name in the prayer barrel. If you want to just write, we'll put it in there. If you want to call, whatever you want to do, we'll pray for you. Come to visit us if you can. Call us, and I'll tell you where we are. And don't forget Jesus loves you. He's concerned about you. He cares about you more than I do. And I care enough.